at center, ready to soak in a rivalry dating back 96 years. 21st ranked Rhode Island takes on Providence in the annual battle for the Ocean State. Alex Bowles, Dickie Sipkins here with you. You played in this game in the 90s. Animosity between these two teams is at its height. What are we in for tonight? High intensity, high energy, playing for pride and the bragging rights to say who runs this state of Rhode Island. And it's a pretty good team, Rhode Island, that comes in. Ranked 21st in the country as you take a look at the starting lineups. E.C. Matthews off to a slow start, perhaps their best scorer, but not quite 100% coming off that ACL injury from last year. Rodney Bullock just dropped 36 for Providence against UNH last week, but it's weak to the lineup. Isaiah Jackson gets his first start of the season. He was held off the scoreboard the last two games that he played, but he gets the start in place of Ryan Fazekas here tonight. And we are just about set to go at the Dunkin' Donut Center, the 129th edition of uh, Providence and Rhode Island. Friars wearing their alternate grays at home tonight. And away we go. This should be a fun one, Dickie, for Rhode Island coming in. Scrappy game they played against Valpo on Wednesday, but Dan Hurley, their head coach, wanted a little bit more aggression out. Yeah, they need to get back in attack mode. Going downhill, attacking the basket, being ultra-aggressive. It's a good start off the kick out. Iverson rattles home a three. And that's what Iverson can do. He's a versatile tweener. A tweener when I say between a three and a four man, but he can extend the defense beyond the three-point line. Ron Iverson, transfer from Memphis, scored double figures, five of his first seven games. Our first look for Providence. Still, all the fans here standing up waiting for that first basket. Bullock, travel. A series that dates back to 1920. 37th time they've held it in this building. And the Friars have won the last six meetings. Rhode Island is tired of losing this game. Well, this is a high-intensity game. This is a bragging rights for the state. This game brings everybody out, all the energy in the arena. This will be a fun matchup today. Rams at 5-2, Friars at 5-2. And, and a 5-0 start for URI to begin this game. And Hassan Martin has been looked upon to be more of a scoring threat for this team. He's extended his game out to 15-foot range as you see him knock down the face-up jump shot. Question is, what will Isaiah Jackson do? Getting a crack in the starting lineup. A little bit of a smaller look for Providence though. Right, and a tough pass bed to the post. Emmett Holt has the first basket for Providence. And Emmett Holt has been a bright spot, a fresh face for this Providence team, an aggressive offensive option in the paint. Jared Terrell wearing 32 in blue. And Iverson this time in the And Hurley in his fifth season. 0 of 4 against Providence. He's a meticulous planner. He's a, an aggressive guy. He and Ed Cooley got into a chirping match a couple of years ago in this game. They want this win desperately. And obviously, Danny Hurley coming from a basketball family. His dad, senior, Bob Hurley, senior. Coaching in his tree, family tree. It's two quick turnovers for Providence. Not something that they do a lot of. Again, one of the better teams in the country in terms of turnover margin. And Rhode Island makes teams turn the ball over seven times a game. They commit one themselves. Cartwright on the run, the bounce pass, and Jackson missed the bunny. Jackson was looking for the foul. Cartwright made an excellent bounce pass. You have to finish. You have to absorb the contact and finish and concentrate. And Jackson, the transfer from George Mason. Mentioned scuffling a little bit the last couple games. Hasn't seen a ton of playing time, but a big opportunity tonight. Terrell catches shoot off the mark. We'll see a little up tempo action from both of these teams. Step in jumper, Lindsay. He got fouled late. Ed Cooley fired up early on. Sixth season at Providence. Got his 200th win the other night coming against UNH. Knows what this rivalry is like on both sides. Former assistant at URI under Al Skinner. 
Lynn Ed Cooley grew up here in Providence, Rhode Island, so he's seen this rivalry when he was in high school, when he was a younger kid. So he's experienced it from all angles. Back in the 70s when this rivalry really heated up, and they moved this game manually to the Civic Center, now the Dunkin' Donuts Center. What Coach Hurley wants his team to do is be aggressive. He feels like they've gotten away from their aggressiveness attacking the basket. Being tentative, and he needs them to be going downhill, attacking the rim. They played a grinding game against Valparaiso earlier this week. Lost by three, had a chance to come back and tie it late. As a foul comes on Providence, Emmett Holt getting in the way of Jarvis Garrett. Got the worst of it. Well, he's jumping out. Holt's doing his job as a big, showing real hard on the ball screen. And he got attacked by Garrett right to the body, right to the body. You can feel that pain from over here. That's the kind of game we're expecting, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That physical. I mean, that's just Garrett setting the tone from a physicality standpoint. That's what they were looking for right off the hop. Chatting with Dan Hurley before this game. That's how they wanted to start this game. Physical early. Nice recovery underneath, but Hassan Martin couldn't finish. And Providence on the run out, looking for an option inside. The freshman Khalif Young got tangled in traffic, and it'll stay with the Friars. And there's a little bit of mishaps happening right now on both sides. A lot of energy. You see the rim run, the rim run, and then the nice pass in the post to Khalif Young. Can't handle it. It's a lot of physical act going on down in, this, in the paint. Rhode Island started out with five quick points, but scoreless now the last two and a half minutes. Lindsay working on Terrell. And fed to Bullock. A little bit of contact inside. A grab results in a foul. Let's take a look at formula for success tonight for Rhode Island. Professor D, what do we have? Well, Rhode Island wants to push the pace. They want to get up tempo and attack the rim. They have to slow down Bullock. He's their high power scoring option for Providence. And then you have to guard the three point line. Three point field goal defense versus Providence. Turnover number three for Providence. And what are their keys to success tonight? You have to close down the paint. Do not let the University of Rhode Island attack the paint. Offensive execution, and right now you see they're turning the ball over unforced turnovers, and then you have to control the pace. That'll be Cartwright's job to control the pace. He's done a terrific job for Providence this year. Fourth in the country in assists. And the three-pointer is off the mark. Cartwright fed it to Jackson, weaving his way through the middle, dumped it off, and Young got swatted away by the best shot blocker in the A-10. That's Hassan Martin. And Rhode Island quickly able to convert the other way with Jared Tell, the junior from Weymouth. And then Rhode Island's going to protect the paint. They have a rim protector in Martin. The team is averaging six-plus block shots a game. You have to go in there and be aggressive. Already Hassan's 30th block of the year. Cartwright in trouble. It's an option with Young, and Cartwright steps back on the three and nails it. A well-needed shot by Providence to kind of change the narrative of this game, change the momentum. Cartwright stepping up, knocking down a long three-point shot. Providence, we know they can be a volume three-point shooting team, as can URI. And they have a response from the corner. And Nicola Kelly. But Kelly saying, what you can do, I can do also. Three ball, corner pocket. It's only the eighth try from deep for a Kelly this year, the sophomore from Italy. All right, great crossover. And gets rewarded. And I want you to know out there, all the people watching the game, this is going to be a very good matchup. Garrett and Cartwright. This matchup will determine this game for the most part. Both teams have to control the pace of what they want to play. This is Garrett. Touch pass looking for Martin. And Providence on the run. Jackson with the stuff. Turnover from Terrell. 
Uri able to recover. Shot clock winding inside of 10. Garrett off the shot fake moving in. Off the mark. Fires looking to run yet again. Cartwright slowing the pace. He's controlling the pace like I got talked about. They're forcing Rhode Island to shoot jump shots. Their type of tempo they want in this game. Off the hands of Bullock. The turnover for Providence is Matthews with a double dribble. Well, this is about what we started, what we expected to start this game, Dickie. High energy, high intensity. Isaiah Jackson playing above the rim in transition. Hashtag boom. Out of this battle of the Ocean State Providence and URI, not separated by much distance. 29 miles south of the capital city, you'll find the University of Rhode Island. It'll jaunt down I-95, take kind of one of those two-lane roads out to find URI and Providence just north of downtown. 129th meeting between these two. You know it only takes 45 minutes to an hour to go from one side of the state to the other, east to west. Well, depending on traffic. <laughs> you know true, how rush hour traffic true, is true, in this true, city. True, true, true. is trying to save it. Cartwright leaping up to do so. Finds Lindsay on the kick out. Got it. Very good penetration by Cartwright. Vision finding an open Lindsay. Lindsay gets that shot because Cartwright gets two feet in the paint, makes the defense collapse, gives him an open knockdown three. As of now, the best three-point shooter for the Friars, who as a team has been quite good lately. Matthews, a foul. AC Matthews. I don't know if they'll give him the continuation here, but got grabbed on his way by. We call this a paint touch. Cartwright gets two feet in the paint, collapses the defense, leaves Lindsey wide open, lock loaded and ready. Look at Cool here, excited. <laughs> Like he's playing in the game, and Lindsey, uh, he's a knockdown three-point shooter. That's what he does. You mentioned Cooley. He's a local guy, knows how much this means, regardless of having won six straight. Matthews off the mark from three. Adams dynamic shooting guard hasn't been himself lately, as this will stay with the Friars. But I like how he doesn't let offense dictate how hard he plays on defense. Matthews struggling to get his rhythm back coming off an injury from last season, but he gets back in transition D, gets a hand on that to break up the loose layup. Fires again, nearly turned it over. Lindsey, off the mark this time. URI team. Looking for their first win against Providence since 2009. And what you want to do is with both teams, you try to play through the intensity and get to a point where you have full composure in this game. Kelly handed it off. You are high. Down to two on the shot clock. Moving in was Langevin. But it's a 30-second violation, never touched the rim. Tight game early on in Providence. Fires with the edge. You know, months prior, you know, during the summer when you're, you know, maybe in Newport trying to have dinner and, uh, you know, it's beat PC or, you know, or, or URI is no good, you know. So it just starts months, months ahead of time and then obviously it intensifies as the days get closer and you can just feel the passion in the state you know so many proud alums of uh, both schools and such proud programs a great tradition it's uh it's just exciting to be a part of well, this is one of the games you can circle on your calendar regardless of which school you went to which school you want to root for they sell this building out virtually every time they meet down at the Ryan Center, which is only about a decade and a half old. They bang that place out as well for this game. Well, Coach Hurley is absolutely right. When I experienced this atmosphere, it didn't matter if it was in the summertime or in the season. Somebody was going to ask you about beating Rhode Island. Or you were going to run into somebody at the mall, and it was going to be talked about this game. In trouble, got it off anyway. Tough shot, fading away. 
And that was good defense by Rhode Island, making him shoot a contested fadeaway jump shot. That's what you want. Another tough one. It's on the other end from Kelly. Well, as expected, the contact has been coming fast and furious on both sides. Well, what you want to do, Alex, right now, we've been nine minutes into this game. You should be settling into a little bit more composure, getting past the intensity and energy. Well, of course, you're familiar with Dan Hurley. You, you, you both played together a while ago. This is the U.S. Olympic Festival team. Yeah, Look we, at that handsome gentleman up on the run. I've, right. I've been knowing Coach Hurley since AAU days. We played against each other in AAU in high school. And this opportunity, we were invited to play in the Olympic Festival, which was a big-time event coached by Mike Jarvis. We all went to L.A. You saw Coach Hurley with a little bit of hair there, a little bit of jet black <laughs> hair, skinny. Uh, I don't know what happened to his hair now, but... <laughs> Coaching will do that to you. Coach Hurley and I have known each other for a long time, since the grassroots days, and he's, we've always had a good relationship and respected each other's game. He's been a great, great guy, and, and obviously great at being a coach. He's done a wonderful job building this URI program. Really building is the right word. Edwards, tough righty finish, and batted out of play, going back to the Friars. But this is the type of energy and intensity that you expect in this game. They're going for loose balls. They're going for loose balls like it's the last loose ball of the game, like this is for the game winner. That's what you want to see, that hustle, that energy. If nothing else, this game will bring that out in you. The question is how you handle it. Yeah, you're not ready to play in this game. <laughs> you're not ready to play in this game. You shouldn't be suiting up. Kazikas goes out of the starting lineup. And Cartwright. Yeah. As expected, both sides not afraid to shoot the long ball. They're all trying to probe through the defense. They found Stanford Robinson outside. And a jostle for the rebound goes the other way. Well, Providence is doing an excellent job controlling the paint, closing the paint so that Rhode Island can't get into the paint touches. They're forcing them to shoot jump shots, and you see Rhode Island coming up empty with missed open opportunities. They call the foul on Nicola Kelly. Kelly, excuse me. Front right on the kickoff. Fazekas, he's got it. And Providence extends to a four-point lead. And Cartwright gets to the paint and has his vision. Good things happen. Coach Cooley wants him to average eight assists a game, and he can get there and find guys like Fazekas. Well, Rhode Island has been a bit careless in their last couple of possessions. This one will stay with the Rams. Fazekas gets the shot because Cartwright, again, two feet in the paint, paint touch. Fazekas ready, locked, loaded, and ready. Knockdown three-point shot. It's already the third assist of the night. You mentioned that eight number that we heard in the opener from Ed Cooley. To the corner. And a three ball knocked down by Christian Thompson. And Christian Thompson, he's a guy that comes off the bench. Backup shooting guard, brings energy, and he can score the ball. Thompson had ten points in the first half of last year's game. URI led by four at halftime, wound up losing at the buzzer. You're seeing this penetration you mentioned earlier, or you mentioned a couple times, Dickie, that paint touch again. Well, Terrell, that's what you want to do. He's, he's driving baseline. You call this a baseline drive, baseline drift. The guy drives baseline, the shooter drifts baseline, wide open catch and shoot. The largest lead in this game has been by five. URI started out on a 5 0 run. Providence by as much as four as Cartwright sits. But Holt, part of this triumvirate from this junior class. Count Isaiah Jackson, the transfer almost in that category as well. Tough pass inside, goes back to the Rams. And a congratulatory bump in front of the URI bench for Kelly for causing that turn. Right there, you have to have patience and poise. You have to let Emmett Holt get there in established position. Edwards didn't let him get there in established position that way. And the pass was a low. It was like a bowling ball pass. That was that was kind of the not get the spare right there. Knock down the two in the ninth end. Jeff 
Jeff Doughton, first touch of the game for the freshman. And Terrell being worked on by Drew Edwards defensively. Looked for the switch, didn't get it. Terrell, anyway, counted off the glass. That's a heck of a finish. And that's just physical brute strength. Ter Terrell is a score using his upper body, shielding off Edwards, and he gives you a little shimmy shake with the shoulders right there on the floor. Excellent move, excellent one-on-one -on -one positioning, and the concentration to score and get to the line. Okay, convert, it's tapped back out for a fresh possession for URI. And Jared Terrell sometimes switches off and plays the point guard. He's a combo guard, mature, a veteran, knows how to play. He performed well in this game last year, led the Rams with 19 points. Tipped in a couple of assists, a couple of steals. Martin, the hook shot, came up short. Offensive rebound, and the follow dunk for Martin coming in. Rams lead by three. The momentum of this game will change back and forth. Providence had the momentum for a second. As you see the steal, Thompson. Are you ready for the layup and drew the contact from Malik White, but it's Martin who stole the show that last possession. Martin staying with it. Attacking the basket. He doesn't get it the first time. Stays with it, catching it at the rim. Watch ahead. Big fella. Trying to get in there and score. Well, I've been fortunate to be on both benches, and, uh, you know, it's it's a game that I think everybody gets excited about. The coaches, the players, the fans, the alumni, uh, the intensity will be high, the energy will be good, and we both want to try to be victorious. So it should be a fun game. Ed Cooley's bunch perhaps trying to flip the script from last year. Remember, Providence was hovering in the top 25 last year. They needed a big scalp on the road. And he's hoping that the flip, that the script is not flipped and Rhode Island does the same to them when the Rams are the top 25. Yeah, when you come to play in the Rhode Island versus Providence game, whose rank doesn't matter? Rankings don't matter in this game because of the energy and the intensity and the pride and the, the bragging rights on the line for this game. So that the rankings go out the window. <laughs> as, far as, as far as they're concerned, both teams can be ranked number one in the country. They're going <laughs> to battle this out as if it's a championship game. Well, it is, in theory, the championship for Rhode Island, Champion, the Ocean State champions, battle. Championship of the Ocean State. And I've, I've been able to experience four of these games and always the same as a player and now I'm getting the opportunity to view it next to my partner here <laughs> and we get to feel the energy and the intensity coming off the court to us it's fun does it, it make you want to suit up right now yeah, maybe a little bit <laughs> maybe. this has been a fun one though as expected we were thinking coming into this game it'd be a wide open contest and it hasn't disappointed yet the one curious thing EC Matthews is he's kind of been struggling the last couple weeks for URI but in theory would be their leading scorer any other day Hassan Martin leads them in scoring right now and Rodney Bullock who had 36 for Providence on Wednesday their leading scorer have yet to put the ball in the basket today and then that's when both teams have to go with the next man up policy the next guy has to step up in that offense and you know it's it's understandable Matthew's still trying to get a rhythm although he did have a very good game against Cincy and help Rhode Island win that game. Yeah, started out the season okay. But has had to reach double figures in the last three games. Kick out for Emmett Holtz. Off the mark. Maybe not the shot you really want if you Providence. You really want to try to get in the paint, especially coming out of a timeout. Get a thrust possession. And I mean thrust something going towards the basket. Kelly guarded by Lindsay. And Terrell backs it up. Working on Fazika, steps in, comes up short. Offensive board for URI. And that's just Holt needing to put his body on Martin and then drive him out. He didn't drive him out. Martin was able to get an easy offensive rebound. Great look inside. And the foul for Martin. Off the dish from Thompson. 
Thompson's been struggling offensively as a shooter and gets in the paint, sharing the ball, creating an opportunity for Martin. Martin catches it. Contact, gets to the free throw line. Martin may be URI's best on-ball defender, but he's starting to pick up interest from scouts based on his scoring touch this year as well, leading the Rams at scoring. Well, Coach Hurley decided that it was necessary to involve Martin more in the offensive part of this game. Have him provide offense inside, and he extended his range out to 15 and 17 feet. So he has to utilize that from the single. 11-0-1 for the Rams. The largest lead of the night for URI. Bullock looking for his first basket. Won't come here, but he'll get a crack at the free throw line. Bullock not only leading the Friars in scoring, but leading, leading the Big East in scoring in the early goal. Well, you had the poise and the patience by Lindsey to wait for Bullock to get in established position. Bullock just using his versatility, his speed, his quickness to get by the defender and draw the foul. 36 points. Now, he's a bucket getter now, Alex. <laughs> he get, I, I saw him when, when Chris Dunn and Mental were here. He would have some spot games where he would be the guy. So he has the ability to fill the basket up. And, and though Bentel and Dunn kind of combined for the game-winning touch for Providence last year, Bullock had a key performance in that game. 16 points, four rebounds for the Friars against URI at the Ryan Center. Matthews still coming up empty. Goes back to Providence. Matthews may have gotten hit towards the end of this as well. Well, this, you, you have to expect the physicality of the game. Oh, it was Martin who got hit. Inadvertent, inadvertent, just scrapping for the ball. It is but a scrap. Cartwright steps back. He's got it. Three-point shooting has come at a pretty good pace for Providence to start the night. And Cartwright has accepted the challenge, embraced it. Now that Dunn is gone to be the leader of this team, control this team, and make plays. And URI comes up empty. So much for that 11-0 run. Providence back within four. Cartwright again. Yeah. Say heat check. All of a sudden, Rams need a response. And they get it in the form of Stanford Robinson. You can't get too comfortable as your problems when you score. The Rhode Island Rams, they're coming right back at you, aggressive in transition. Kyron Cartwright might be the assist leader on this team, and he can splash it in every now and again. Absolutely, he's feeling it. Knocked down the first shot, now he just steps back, lines it up, and that's what I call Alex hashtag splash. Just look at him. If you go under, which Rhode Island is doing their job of the scout report, you go under on Cartwright, but he's feeling it right now, so you may have to adjust as this game goes on. Start of the year with that terrific game against Vermont. 12 assists, a career high that day. And the question that we ask Ed Cooley a lot as this season has gone along is, where's the support going to come from? Bullock's obviously scoring pretty well. Emmett Holt, a quiet 14 points per game. But that support scoring-wise has got to come as well. Perhaps Cartwright the answer tonight. Well, I think if Cartwright can get you 12 to 14 points, that's a good day offensively. But he really needs to get you 8 to 11 assists then your team is really playing well. Friars looking for the lead. And they got it. And it's Cartwright again. Eight straight points for Cartwright. Matthews getting away from the double, and the fadeaway comes up short. Matthews still without a point in this game. Cartwright is feeling it, isn't it? Oh, he wanted to take that shot. He, <laughs> he wanted to let it fly, but you like his maturity right there to hold up and 
Bring it back. Finds another good look. And Bullock is off the mark. He's yet to convert today. Matthew, a reversal. And a foul underneath. Martin getting hacked. The 5'11 point guard from Compton, California. Just filling it from all around the court. Coming down, lining up, knocking it down, seeing the threes. Tyron Cartwright, done a little bit of everything that I take him. He's stepping up on the offensive side today. When you see Cartwright having 15 points in the first half, four for five, three-point shooting, that is a bonus. That's a plus for your team because you're not necessarily expecting him to score a lot of points. 10 to 11 points a game, that's a, that's a good game for him. 15 in the first half, that's a great production offense we have. But you want to see his assists. And if he's not getting assists, why not take the points? Yeah, that's true. Already at a season high with 15 points. Previous high came against Memphis. Coming up at halftime, we'll get you back to Los Angeles. Mike Hill and Jim Jackson take a look at the big basketball games coming to Fox and FS1 this month. And we'll look ahead to the Pearl Harbor Invitational. Dickie and I break down the stats and highlights here at the dunk. Utah Xavier Temple, Villanova, Marquette, Wisconsin. All coming up this month. Now, Alex, I said in the earlier part of the game, keep your eye on the Garrett Cartwright matchup. Cartwright is winning that matchup right now. And nearly got the screen set up by Bullock. Cartwright decided to peel back. And a foul reaching in as Bullock tried to corral that pass. Well, that was good. That was good defense by Thompson guarding Cartwright. Obviously, Coach Hurley wants to put a bigger guy on Cartwright. Thompson fought over the screen and got there to keep prevent him from getting a shot off. Bullock still has yet to record a point tonight. You mentioned leads the Big East in scoring. Here's his first. He's performed well in the defensive end as well for Providence. Eight steals, five blocks, leads the team in rebounding, but splits the pair at the line. And we are tied at 27. Well, we're getting our money's worth right now. Competitive game, momentum changing back and forth. We're getting spectacular plays, spectacular dunks, and spectacular three-point shooting for Hartwright. Definitely getting our money's worth. Hart in and out, a follow there for the Rams. And it is Matthews with his first deuce of the game. And that's, that's a good situation for Matthews, seeing the ball go through the rim, being aggressive, shot not falling, and he's being aggressive, attacking the offensive glass. Check that. That is Doughton, not Matthews, on the follow. Matthews has been engaged. Just hasn't recorded the point yet. And actually, it was. It was a tip-in for Matthews. We had that log in our monitor here. Well, when you're struggling as a player, especially coming off injury from last season, what way to score but get an easy basket attacking the glass. You see Matthews, he sees an open lane. He goes in there and gets the follow-up. It comes off the rim right, and he finishes. Remember, he's coming off an ACL injury, and that's hard to do. Even baseline, he had a particularly bad one. and had to go through a ton of rehab. And talking with Dan Hurley, he still feels like perhaps he's a bit tentative given you, you have to use that knee to plant in the low post, especially how much he likes to attack the rim. And that's understandable. An ACL injury, normally they'll tell you eight to nine months, but that's just eight to nine months from the physical standpoint. You have to tack on another two to three months just from a mental standpoint of getting over the injury, which occurred to him first game of last season. He had to learn how to walk again. Spent hours in the pool, the treadmill. When he wasn't doing that, just doing stationary work, shooting free throws, even when he couldn't run. Three-point lead for the Rams. And Bullock still looking for his first field goal. Nearly had it knocked away, but a reached in foul from Christian Thompson. And Cooley's trying to get isolation situations for Bullock. Bullock still has to have some poise and patience, really read the defense because everybody's keying on him. Try not to force anything. Right there, he's fortunate enough to get fouled. And now go to the free throw line. Bullock will 
shoot a one and one here. The conversation about something. Minute 54 left on the clock. I think they just want to make sure they have the foul situation right. Ninth foul for the Rams. Next one puts Providence in the double bonus. Forget this Providence team finished fourth in the Big East last year. Obviously, they had the services of Ben Bento, Chris Dunn at their disposal, the two combining for the tip in at the end of last year's game against URI. But there's a bit of a search going on for the same kind of offensive firepower they had. And perhaps the answer is that they will score just a bit less. Well, you know, you start, you go into the season and start. Trying to see who's going to fill those shoes. Obviously, Bullock can fill Bento's shoes from a scoring standpoint. And now you try to determine who's going to fill Chris Dunn's shoes. And Cartwright seems like the man that's doing that as of now. Alpha Diallo comes into the game and picks up a quick foul for Providence. That's his first. I really like the fact that Cartwright has embraced this, this moment of this game, but he's embracing from the get-go, from, from back in preseason, knowing that Coach Cooley needs him to be the facilitator, yep. needs him to be the spark plug, needs him to make plays for his teammates and know to get them in the right position to score. On Big East Media Day, Ed Cooley was, was telling me he wanted his production to triple. You don't put that <laughs> on a kid's shoulders unless you think he can handle it. Absolutely, absolutely. Lead at three for URI. Largest lead tonight for the Rams has been seven. And Bullock tightly guarded and got grabbed. Nope, he walked. Wow. There's a little bit of contact there first, but it's a turnover on Bullock. And the seventh of the night for the Friars. And that's just frustration right there. That's frustration from the score. Rodney Bullock normally would have 10 to 11 points at this part of the game. He's a little frustrated. He's Forcing the issue right now. And when you force the issue, that's what happens with the turnovers. Knocked it up as the eighth for Providence. Work was in the gym early today, working on his jumper. And it has not worked tonight. Terrell got it from the corner. And that's just Terrell keeping the baseline versus Providence's zone. Finding an opportunity on the baseline, and he can score in a variety of ways. The referees are checking. Thirty-second timeout is called on the floor. Rhode Island has extended it to a six-point lead. And for URI over Providence, annual battle of the Ocean State. Tyron Cartwright leading the Friars with 15. The pet band jamming out, sellout crowd at Dunkin' Donuts Center in downtown Providence. What of the play from Kyron Cartwright. Rodney Bullock, his teammate, has struggled just a little bit. Kyron Cartwright has picked up the scoring. To fill that void. And a turnover to Terrell, but he gives it right back. Oh, nearly had that inbounds pass picked off. Cartwright to try to wind this clock down a little bit. Friars trailing by six, approaching the half. Right with eight on the clock. Got the screen set. The lane cleared, and he kicked it out for Bullock. Way off the mark. Young the putback. Right place, right time. And Dan Hurley is apoplectic on the Rhode Island bench, asking for a shot clock violation. He was jumping up and down in front of the scorer's table, waving his arms, hoping to get a 30-second call. Let's take a look. shooting stroke has not been there tonight. You can't tell from there whether or not the shot clock hits zero. Now the clear thing to keep in mind with the shot clock is they go by the horn and whether it hits zero up top. Don't listen at the end of a half situation for the horn. Well, Alex, it looked like from under the basket, with so much intensity and energy in the crowd yelling that they didn't get off in time. They also didn't sound the horn, did they? Yeah, it looked like it was in his hand on, uh, on the zero, but the, the refs couldn't hear the horn. 
Hurl Coach Hurley did a nice dance, Alex, on the sideline, though, to get their attention. So we just had John Gaffney come by and explain that they can look to see if he got it off in time within the last couple of minutes and a half, but they... I don't know if that's... Well, here's the problem. The, it, it, he, he came over, and as John explained to me just now, the horn sounded. It was quite a bit dull, so they can't go by that. But Dan Hurley, right away, was leaping up and down, asking for the review. And there is no basket. You saw the shot clock hit zero right when he released. So no basket is the call. URI will have possession. Going to build on a six-point lead. Eight tenths of a second between the shot clock and the game clock. For all intents and purposes, URI will hold for the final shot. The largest lead today has been seven. Balance scoring so far. Martin leads the way with nine. Who will get the final touch of the half? Maybe nobody. On a travel from Jarvis Garrett. Usually their steady point guard, one of the better ones in the Atlantic 10, but commits a significant turnover, giving Providence another crack at it. Kelly guarding the inbound. Cartwright accelerating. Pulls up with five, and Cartwright can't get the bounce. You or I with another crack at it, but mishandled by Martin. And he can just heave it, making the top of the backboard. But after 20 minutes, you or I feeling pretty good about the start of this one. A six-point lead over Providence College. Shooting the ball fairly well, mixing in some three-point shooting. Dan Hurley's squad can go to the locker room. Up by six. Dickey, you've got Dan Hurley. Coach Hurley, going back and forth with the intensity, the momentum of the first half. How do you feel about your team's performance thus far? I felt like we settled in better later in the half. Obviously, you know, dealing with a little foul trouble with Karan, you know, there early. But I thought our guys really settled in. I thought we guarded well. And we, we just look like we're a confident team right now. Now that your team has settled in, what do you go in and tell them at halftime to prepare for to come out in the second half? I mean, good. they're going to come out and, and push hard to have an early surge, try and get Bullock going. We've done a great job against Bullock. Obviously, we've got to change our ball screen coverages a little bit. We're caught right the way he's shooting the ball right now. Thanks, Coach. You got it there. Six-point lead for URI over Providence after 20 minutes of play. Yeah, we got our money's worth here tonight. Terrific start in Providence. Fifteen first-half points for Cartwright. One away from a career high. Take a look at the first half numbers. Providence utilizing three-point shooting. Cartwright's responsible for three of those. But they have turned the ball over nine times, and they haven't gotten much support from their bench. Only three bench points. URI with 11 from their bench as we start the second half. Well, you had Rhode Island finish off the half with the momentum in their favor. This is where Providence has to execute offensively coming out of the halftime. Rodney Bullock still is yet to get in gear for Ed Cooley's bunch. Yet to hit a field goal in this game. All his points have come at the free throw line. And when you think about some of the marquee players for this game, Rodney Bullock from Providence. You talk about Peron Iverson for Rhode Island and E.C. Matthews. Those guys haven't really gotten to his game in the scoring column. So might be a second wave of scoring yet to come. Cartwright got the screen set up by Holtz. And Lindsay moving it off the jab step. Holt from the corner. It's a long two. In the 
first bucket of the second half goes to the Friars. Well, Providence had a lot of ball movement. The ball went from side to side to get the Rhode Island Rams to move defensively and found Holt in the corner for an open three. Jarvis Garrett running point for URI, and Garrett exploding to the rim. And that's the strength of Garrett's game. He's quick. He's the engine to this Rhode Island team. He knows in the first half he didn't perform like he wanted to, and now he's setting the tone starting the second half. Point guard against point guard, and Cartwright unable to answer. Offensive rebound, Bullock, and there's his first bucket of the night. And when you're a scorer, you just find ways to put the ball in the basket, especially when it's not going your way in the first half. You come out with a, a sense of urgency to find ways, rebounding, steals, defensively, to put the ball in the basket, and that's what Bullock did. Entry pass got tipped away. And Bullock controls the run out for the Friars. Cartwright in no hurry here. His team trailing by four. Holt just hit that long two for Providence. And Lindsey. And you don't normally see that by Jalen Lindsey, a drive to the basket in the paint. Most of his shot opportunities are behind the three-point line. But he had a wide open lane and aggressively drove right to get to the basket. He put on a lot of muscle this offseason, expecting a larger role. This ball rolls out, but will stay with the Rams. Bullock finally getting on the score sheet and Lindsay chipping it. The Friars needed to be aggressive coming out. Get, gain the momentum and how do you do it? Bullock going in, aggressively offensive rebounding and putting the ball back in. Strong take from Garrett to roll it in with the right hand. And Alex, I said to you, and I'm going to say it to you again from the first half, really watch this Garrett-Cartwright matchup. The first half, Cartwright had the advantage. Garrett is coming out determined to gain the advantage back. Bullock. Pops one in from deep. And that's the last thing the Rams want to see is Bullock coming to life. You can't keep a score down. Once he gets going and finds ways, the easy offensive rebound got his feel back, his rhythm, and now he extended the defense, and they find their go-to score, Rodney Bullock, with a knockdown three. You see Matthews has yet to get engaged. That matchup has been interesting to watch. Martin in trouble, forced up a shot. Offensive rebound, Iverson traveled after the board. Rodney Bullock bringing the energy now. He's finding his scoring touch now. Extending it out behind the three. Cartwright finding him. He's lining it up, knocking it down. And like you said, Alex, that is not what you want to happen if you're the Rams. Bullock finding his offensive rhythm. Bullock up to eight as Jackson got around the tight defense. With some nifty dribbling, but missed on the free throw line shot. E.C. Matthews, air ball. Cartwright gets fouled. Or actually commits the foul on Terrell, trying to box him out, looking for the loose ball. And Matthew's struggling, struggling, and that's what happens. Bullock forcing the issue right there. Forcing the issue. There was nowhere to go. There was nowhere to go. The Rams were already set, loaded up on D, nowhere to go. He, and, and Bullock understands, but you look at Coach Hurley, you have the love plan for these two coaches, Coach Hurley and Coach Cooley, Alex. These guys are letting their players play, letting them yeah. find themselves. They understand the youth. They understand the mindset of the players of the day. They Coach Hurley understands Matthews is trying to get in the rhythm. Coach Cooley understands that guys on his team are going to try to find offense, and then let he, they're letting them play. Well, you knew from the word go that Dan Hurley's bunch wanted to attack. They're successful. That's been their M.O. And Hurley talked about it. As you see, Matthews searching for a shot again. And Coach Hurley talked about it at shoot-around today. He felt like his team was tight. They were tight in the Duke game. They were tight in the Valparaiso game. He wanted them to loosen up. He felt like that ranking, that 21 ranking, is making them play to protect the ranking instead of play to be aggressive and attack like they do. 
You can't keep it if you lose games. One point lead here as Isaiah Jackson dribbling off his foot and off of a URI defender in the area. A slim margin for the Rams at the Dungeon Donuts Center. Fox, you can watch it on Fox Sports Go as well. Rancic off that inbounds pass, URI able to take control and Jarvis Garrett Perhaps thought he was going to go up for the take. Matthews climbs up with the ball in his hands and has his first field goal of the night. Matthews is able to make that shot because of Coach Hurley. Matthews shot an air ball two possessions ago, then he came up short. And Coach Hurley looked, Hurley looked at him and clapped his hands and said, you're all right. Building that confidence in your player when you know he's struggling. A little bit tentative to start this year, Hurley told us. Cartwright looking for a new career high comes up short sitting on 15 points tonight for the Friars oh, That's a tough shot fading away Terrell might have been some contact there as the Friars look to run Bullock spot three no and Isaiah Jackson in a good spot to grab the rebound got batted out of his hands and will stay with the Friars well, when you have confidence in your player and you know he's struggling and you encourage him to keep playing, eventually he'll get his game going as you see E.C. Matthews finally knocking down a three-point shot. And I know it feels good for him, especially how hard he's worked to get back to this place where he can be on the court after his injury. Off the inbound. Jackson off the mark from three. I like that quick trigger at times off inbound passes. But the set play goes around, and Garrett controls for URI, leading by four. To the corner, and a Kelly. No, scratch for the ball, and Martin comes up with it, the reach in on Jackson. And that's where the Friars have to gang rebound. Hassan Martin, a very aggressive offensive rebound. You have to gang rebound, help Isaiah Jackson out. Foul the half for the Friars as Jackson sits. Garrett looking for a target. And Matthews controls. You, can, you just get a glimpse of how dynamic Matthews can be. Oh, absolutely. You can see the flashes of his talent. They, they consider him the, the most talented kid on their team. Garrett. Planted his feet, missed everything. Again, a putback for Martin. And the lead back to six for URI. Well, the luxury of having a Hassan Martin, a big body, strong post player who can aggressively offensive rebound and get you second chance points. Providence has gone the last three and a half minutes without a point. Cartwright spinning on Garrett. Dumped it off. Bullock got fouled. Hassan Martin just doing what he does best. It's, there's no mystery why he's 69% field goal percentage in the, all his baskets around the rim. Offensive rebound, being aggressive. All the things he does on both sides of the floor are hustle plays, qualifies. They said on that foul pole loss that they had earlier this week, that game. He said he's going to help them down the road. There's a really rowdy environment at Valparaiso. They're a talented team. Alec Peters has been carrying them the last two years. They haven't seen that all year. This is a rowdy environment here tonight. They've responded well. Yeah, that game on the road at Valparaiso. That gym is always rocking for mid-major college. Absolutely. Gets them in preparation for this game right here. But again, you have to already know what the type of intensity is going to be when it's a Rhode Island versus Providence game. And he knows the tempo has slowed quite a bit. We have a foul away for the ball. And we'll go against uh, Edwards, excuse me. Well, the tempo is slowed. It's getting into a drag out, almost possession by possession, playoff type atmosphere game. And this yeah. is what you want. Now that the nostalgia, now that the hype and the energy has kind of calmed down. On Kemper. 
Terrell again leading the Rams in scoring in that first half. Now has nine. And Jared Terrell just surveying the floor, probing for his offense, came off of the ball screen. They didn't pick him up. Nice mid-range knockdown, Jay. Terrell has been quite stout with this mid-range game. Well, he's just taking his time. He's a veteran player. He understands. We need a good shot. He saw that the defense didn't pick him up. Pulls up a nice mid-range. And he can score in a variety of ways. Jump shots, threes, mid-range, attacking the basket, athleticism above the rim. A foul on Christian Thompson for URI, his second. The Friars need something going to the basket. They need to get fouled. They need something. I don't know if I'm looking for that jump shot right there. Contested J, especially that early in the clock. Terrell, long-range jumper again, off the mark, scrapped for the loose ball, and a whistle underneath. Now the physicality has been there. Drew Edwards picks up his third foul. And that's where you, that's right there in the paint. That's where you have to put your hard hat on. That's where men among boys battling. Hassan Martin just grabbing and snagging rebound. And that's the difference right there in the game right now. Hassan Martin with a double-double right now. But the difference, Rhode Island is getting opportunities in the paint where the Friars are shooting jump shots and contesting Jays. It's already his third double-double of the year as well. Seems to stuff stat sheets quite a bit. And Coach Cooley brings in Khalif Young, a talented freshman, to come in and see if he can kind of change the momentum of Hassan Martin's offensive rebound. Somebody get in there and box out. We need somebody to clean the glass. But there's been a clear difference in the tone of this game as well. A lot more shooting in that first half. Here it's about the battle right underneath. And URI with a bit of pressure. Cartwright able to escape it. Drew Edwards right in front of his bench. This ties the largest lead of the game for the Rams at seven. All right, still stuck on 15. This is a turnover. Don't think another foul. Cyril Langevin with the takeaway. URI looking to extend the lead on their own at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Seven-point lead for URI on the road at the Providence Friars, looking to win their sixth game of the season. This weekend, we pay tribute to the events at Pearl Harbor 75 years ago. Fox Sports is proud to support merging vets and players in its mission of ensuring our nation's warriors can be as productive off the field as they were on it by joining combat veterans with elite athletes to form a common bond over dedication and teamwork. Visit foxsportssupports.com to learn more. Alex Faust, former Providence Friar, Dickie Sipkins here with you. Rhode Island with a seven-point lead on the road, trying to snap a six-game losing streak against Providence in this rivalry showdown. Nice touch inside, and Langevin, who just caused the turnover, able to get a paint touch, but unable to convert with some contact underneath. Well, I like the fact that Khalif Young, the young big fella, comes in and blocks that with the left hand. That's being rim protector. Coming in, focused, doing his job, swiping that. Security. Only Protect the my house. Only the sixth block of the year for the freshman. I, I think he'll, he'll, he'll start to have more and more of those as his minutes start to increase and as time goes on. Christian Thompson picks up a foul. And here's that part of the game where Providence needs to get the ball movement and body movement again, side to side. Try to get Bullock flashing to the basket off the movement. And again, another foul away from the ball. And you see Coach Cooley is a little frustrated because it's hard. Right there, you're forcing the issue. The Rhode Island Rams, they're all set up. They're, they're loaded up on defense, Alex, and you're forcing the issue. You're looking and looking. Everybody's looking at Lindsay on the block. You get bailed out by the foul. 
Last one on. Terrell, his second. Rams just trying to find a way to extend. I don't know how Cartwright got away, but we have an injured player down after the three-pointer by Lindsey. They're going to have to give some attention to Christian Thompson, who is down on the deck. Looks like Christian Thompson came off. Oh, you got Cartwright, Cartwright yep. flinging his arm to kind of get him off. Hit Thompson in the face. Now, given all the off-ball fouls they call, I'm surprised they didn't call that. Well, I don't think it was malicious. He's just flinging them off of him. I don't think he was doing that on purpose, but... I don't know. I mean, it, that, that arm looked like he was trying to push him away or do something. Yeah, I, I, I think he was trying to... His thought process was to fight him off initially. See, Thompson had his arm stuck out, and I think the reaction was to fight him off, fight his arm off, but it slings and hits Thompson in the head. And don't forget that a potential flagrant foul can be reviewed at the monitor and turned into a flagrant if it's not called on the floor. Well, I think when you're judging that as a referee, you have to look at the, the totality of the play, where it began. You see the hand. But this is where the physicality of the game, I mean, I remember playing, playing back in the day, the physicality. Not the first time that there's been physicality. 1990, take a flashback. You're playing in this game. But look at number 42. I'm, I'm going over there. Coach Mons runs out. I'm chilling. And then I take a Lennox Lewis punch, and I'm chasing. I'm chasing a guy at the other end, the referee. I get hit with a, with a, a blindside punch, and I sprint chasing the, the guard, all, and he runs out the gym. So we got a referee chasing me. The guards run out. How are you going to hit me and then sprint right. out the gym? Kenny, gotta make it, you got to make it fair. But your, your teammate Kenny McDonald was working on his kickboxing, too. Kenny, Kenny McDonald was ahead of his time. He was U, <laughs> UFC. He was a UFC fighter before uh, UFC was even thought about. Not the first time there's been a scrap between these two teams. We'll see if that latest contact, which was not considered a flagrant, leads to anything else. Terrell. Good to finish it. Cartwright looking to push. Cartwright peels back, sensing perhaps some contact, and he'll move back and get a better look. Four-point game. Friars looking to remain dominant at home in this series. Lindsay catch and shoot off the mark. A big rebound for Iverson. Rhode Island has struggled to convert their last couple looks. But again, you see the Friars... They're getting jump shot attempts where the Rams are getting attempts in the paint. And that's why they have 18 points in the paint right now. Where Providence only has eight. That's the style they'd like to see. Four to shoot. Pull up three. Terrell way off. Never touched the rim. And a shot clock violation results. And that right there is not managing the shot clock. Coach Hurley's a little upset right now because he's looking for his point guard, Garrett, and his veteran, Terrell, to understand what the shot clock is. Right. Now you get the shot clock late in the shot clock at the four or three seconds, and you're forcing up a bad shot. You are I without a basket the last two and a half minutes. Cartwright, a three. No. Offensive rebound. Lindsey skying in from nowhere and got stripped with a foul call. And I like Jalen Lindsey's effort right here. She missed the jump shot before. Cartwright shoots another jump shot. That's back-to-back -back jump shots and back-to-back -back possessions. And Lindsey decides, let me go in and attack the glass. Let me get an easier opportunity, a paint touch. Iverson's third foul. Now, Alex, the game has gotten a little out of control right now, a little, little ugly right now. And, and this is where both point guards have to now gain composure, the type of pace that they want with their team. Fire fans sense some blood in the water. Garrett engaged and got swatted by Evan Holt. Cartwright 
finish to Vizikas. And that's a goal 10. The game is tied off the goaltending call. Defense turning into offense. Emmett Holt staying big, using the left hand to block the shot, and then Cartwright out to the races and drops it off to a three-point shooter who's attacking the basket for Zekas. 7-0 run to tie the game. Matthews crossing over, putting up the teardrop. That wouldn't go. And a better pass might have found Holt in a better shot. As it stands, he had to heave one up. In transition. Not a good shot at all. Emmett, Emmett Holt playing in the moment of, of the high intensity. Not a good shot whatsoever. Coach Cooley very upset at that shot. You get a good defensive possession, and then you throw up a shot without your team even being down for it. Aaron puts the Rams back in front. Last three games have been decided by a total of 11 points. Two of the last three have come down to the final possession. Cartwright puts it in, and it's a new career high for Tyron Cartwright. Tied at 49. Iverson, tough look. Got it back and swatted. Holtz, nifty. Providence has the lead. First time in the second half for the Friars. That's how you change the momentum. Timeout, Dan Hurley. Rhode Island asks for time and a frenzy at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. First the three-pointer from Cartwright. Or first the layup from Cartwright. And then Holtz gives the Friars the lead underneath. Two run to take the lead for the first time in the second half. Well, you take leads and gain the momentum by getting shots in the paint. The hesitation dribble by Cartwright freezes the defense. Reverse layup, but again, a paint score. And then you drop it down to the big fella who's paint ceiling, going to the right-hand jump look. Again, a paint touch, a paint score. Well, it goes back to your formula for success, Dickie. Hey, you have to close the paint away from the defense of the offense of Rhode Island. You had to have offensive execution what they did the last few plays. And then Cartwright has gained control of the pace for the Friars. Five ties, five lead changes. What else would you expect in a game like this? There were eight lead changes in last year's game. It came down to the final possession. Garrett with four on the shot clock. Still looking for a lane. Fades away. Aaron hits. That's a tough look. Big time shot by big time shot maker. And we are tied for the sixth time. When Garrett got that shot off, he got into rhythm. He saw the shot clock winding down. He got his dribble into the rhythm he wanted to get his shot off. This matchup of the two point guards has been fascinating. Holt over the top gets blocked by Martin. Top shot blocker in the Atlantic 10, one of the best in the country. Hassan Martin doesn't average four rebounds for nothing. This is sick. Shots. Terrific save, and Garrett off the mark. Fazekas, he's a rhythm shooter. Thought about it. Bullock fades away. He can do that as well. Rodney Bullock, after a slow start, is up to 12. And that right there, that's just all about your best player, your best scorer, finding a way to make shots. Keep in mind, Bullock's season low is 16. He has 12 tonight. And this ball goes back to Providence. The momentum of the game going back and forth. Shot makers stepping up for each other's team. Garrett 
the step back. And then Bullock finding a way to step back. I can do what you can do, but even better. This arena has been the long time home to this game. First as a neutral court. But as a home and home series, it's gained a lot of intensity. Rhode Island and Providence tussling for this one, and the Rams still in it, Dickie. Well, Professor D tries to give you the formula, Alex. Push the pace. Both teams, 53 possessions. Slow down Bullock. They've kept him to 12 points when he's averaging 22. Three point field goal D. They've been in a struggle to keep the Friars from making threes. Friars are shooting 50% behind the three point line. And yet, Friars have the lead. We may have a star in the making with Kyron Cartwright. Playing unbelievably, offensively, defensively, making big shots. Ed Cooley's always had a star backcourt. Cartwright might be the next one. And he's at that, he's close to that eight assist mark. He has seven right now. Bullock, team three, no. And the rebound for who else but Hassan Martin, who's done a terrific job on both ends of the floor. That is 15th rebound, 14th, excuse me, of the night. Iverson. Iverson got away with a push off right there. Got away with a push off. Providence College has won this game six straight times. Rhode Island tired of losing to their in state rival. Watch the shot clock now. This is where the point guard has to make a play. Cartwright just tried to do a bit too much. Holt had to force it. It came up empty. That's a terrific defensive possession for URI. Yes, you have to commend the Rhode Island Rams on that defensive possession as a team. They were locked in. Made the Friars take a bad shot in the critical wind down of the shot clock. That's what you want from a defensive possession. Now, in order for the Rams to gain the momentum back, they need to get back to their paint touch. Offensive paint touches. Martin and Garrett playing the two-man game with a foul away from the ball. And Rhode Island just searching for any kind of basket. They have not scored in two and a half minutes. But I like the Garrett and Cartwright matchup in the second half. It got more intense. I know Garrett probably went in at halftime and felt like he didn't do what he needed to do, and he's come out with a sense of urgency and a purpose. Deep three, Matthews, short, and Bullock skies him for the board. For as much as Bullock does in the scoring, and he's a terrific rebounder as well. Cartwright to the corner, and Lindsey too much. I can live with that shot. I can live with that shot. That was an offensive crossing transition kick out to your shooter. And Matthews attacking ties the game. We are tied for the seventh time. And Matthews is not a big time player for nothing. He has the ability to find ways to score. You see in this game, he's finding his rhythm and coming up with big shots and big moments. Deliberate pace for the Friars, and Bullock crossing through the lane. When you get to that paint with aggressive moves, good things happen for your team. You get a closer high percentage shot, and you give your team an opportunity to get an offensive rebound. Martin off the mark. Cartwright just wants to slow this down. Friars leading by two. Setting up for another classic finish. Good decision by Cartwright. Foul away from the ball. Friars continue to scrap for this lead. The star players stepping up for their team. E.C. Matthews. Kyron Cartwright, both players finding ways as Matthews going in transition, finding a way to get to the paint with the running hook. And then Bullock delivering with the running hook also. They're playing a game of horse, Alex. The Providence URI game might come down to the wire. Last year, Jared Terrell tied the game for URI with six seconds left. And then Ben Benzel on 
the tip in at the buzzer. He finished with 23. Providence by that much. Getting out of the Ryan Center with a big win. Providence has won the last six meetings. And as we mentioned earlier, the last three have been decided by a grand total of 11 points. And that's why each possession is so important, especially in the critical of the game. I consider the critical of the game the last three minutes. Possession by possession, you have to be locked in on your execution. It'll be a one and one for Rodney Bullock, who got fouled by Nicola Kelly, his fourth. Rams have eight team fouls this half. And Bullock can make it a two possession game with one more free throw. Slow start. Bullock splits the pair at the line. Ballot Rams, they need to be aggressive right here. They need to get something going to the basket and hopefully the ball foul. That puts them in the bonus for the rest of the game. What did Dan Hurley tell us before this game? Attack. Attack, attack. Going down here. Garrett thought about it. Six on the shot clock. Now Kelly handed it off with three to shoot. Terrell moving in. Off the mark of Kelly, the tip. It wouldn't go. And a third try for Martin. Pulls Rhode Island within one. Full court pressure. And Ronnie Bullock wants a timeout. One point game at the Dunkin' Donuts Center in downtown Providence. Providence up by one. They had an excellent defensive possession, but you have to finish off a defensive possession with a defensive rebound. They didn't do that. Hassan Martin, again, doing his job in the paint, coming up with big offensive rebound put-back taps. You have to feel deflated if you're the Friars that playing such hard defense at possession and coming up empty by giving up an offensive rebound putback. Martin just one rebound away from tying a career high. Already has his third double-double of the season. Providence leads by one, under two minutes to go. Looking for their seventh straight victory in this rivalry showdown. Pazikas, that apparently was tipped. And he got fouled. Stanford Robinson backpedaling. And then you see the Rams right now turning up the intensity defensively. They're not, they're trying to disrupt the Friars offense. They're not going to let them get able to dribble handoff. They're trying to make it uncomfortable for them in this possession. They'd rather it be a chippy physical game and try to fight fire with fire from the outside. Absolutely. Fazekas. And the free throw shooters on this team. But Alex, that's why it's so important right now in this last minute and 39 seconds. Both teams have to be strong with the ball offensively. They have to be locked in defensively as a team, talking to each other, everybody moving on a, on a string. The lead is two, 90 seconds to go. And they all rise at the dunk. Seven to shoot. Matthews, their star guard. Yep. Couldn't quite find the rhythm he's been looking for. The question is, when do they foul? One possession game for now. No foul right now. You play solid defense right here. Make the Friars take a tough shot. Then you secure the defensive rebound. Lindsay. Top. And a two possession game. Big time shot by Jalen Lindsay. Alex, that is a big time shot with the shot clock winding down. Jalen Lindsay, not normally for creating a shot for himself, almost pushed off, but he went to what he does best. Two dribbles to a spot. Pull up jump shot over the little Garrett defender. Right here, you see him? I, he knows he can get to a spot. 
If I can get to my spot, I can raise up over Jarvis Garrett. I am a shooter. I'm locked in, and I knock down a mid-range J. The lost art of basketball. Lindsay up to 13 points. Providence leading by four, 39 seconds to go. The other thing on that possession that he did, ran the shot clock all the way down, wound some time down. And now you or I will have to hurry out of this timeout. They have one remaining. Rhode Island definitely coming out of this timeout. Coach Hurley's over there right now drawing up the next two offensive possessions for them. But he's also drawing up what you're going to do right now offensively and what you're going to do defensively if you don't score right here. Grant. So he has two things on his mind, Alex. Scoring and if you don't score, what you have to do right away, and that's going to have to be fouled if you don't score. Rams just two for their last nine, including that last try from Matthews, who was just one of seven from three. Go for the quick two. You have to go for the quick two. You don't have time playing around. Don't, don't come out and search for a three-point shot unless it just happens to be open off of penetration. You want to go downhill to the basket. You're already in the bonus. You want to either get fouled, get to the line, or score and get fouled and make a three-point play. But do not, whatever you do, do not settle for an initial jump shot. Matthews has been fighting his shot today. Just nine points, one of seven from three. Hassan Martins led the way for Rhode Island with 14. Uh, Alex, if Rams score here in four seconds, if they score a basket in four seconds, then they can play straight up deep. If it gets under 30 seconds and they score, they're, they're still going to have to foul. Moving in. They do score. And you can count it. Plus the foul. An aggressive play by your strongest score. Jared Terrell being aggressive on a one-on-one -on -one play. Taking advantage of Lindsay's defensive off balance. Nice concentration, nice focus, makes the basket. Not an opportunity to make a three-point play. One possession game under the 30-second shot clock. What you want to try to do is get them to turn the ball over in the backcourt. If you don't get the turnover, as soon as it gets across half court, you have to foul. Full court pressure from URI on the inbound. Don't foul now. Don't foul now. Try to get the turnover. Kick ball. Providence will get the inbound it again, but this time it'll be from the sideline. A little bit of a tighter window to work with. And a timeout is called. And Cooley wants to talk things over. One point game, 26 seconds left. Rams have not beaten the Friars since 2009. They haven't won in this building since 2002. Ironically, the last time that it was the annual home of this rivalry rivalry game. Since it's been a home-and-home -home series, they haven't beaten the Friars in this building. Well, this is an unbelievable opportunity for both teams. Obviously, the Rams to get that monkey off their back from not being able to win and beat the Friars. And then for the Friars to be the number 21-ranked team, that's a big win for them to go on their resume. But right here, if you're the Rams, if you're Coach Hurley, you want to have a very aggressive defensive possession here as they take it out. You go for the steal. If you don't get the steal, you still try to trap it in the backcourt. Once it gets across half court, Alex, you have to foul right away. So Fazekas will inbound from right in front of the URI bench. He'll have Stanford Robinson guarding him. 26 seconds on the clock, a one-point game. And it's Cartwright who gets the inbounds pass. Run and jump. Yep, run and jump. Cartwright having trouble. Heaves it up. Blocks wide open. Is that the dagger? Three-point game. 14 seconds left. And a timeout for Dan Hurley. Unbelievable composure by your junior starting guard, Kyron Cartwright. Handling the pressure, not falling apart, seeing a Rodney Bullock, your leading scorer, your team, wide open down for it, and being able to deliver a precise pass for the dunk. I think Alex, Coach Cooley now sees 
that he has a special gem in Kyron Cartwright. His ability to control his team, control the pace, have poise, have composure to deliver plays like that. How out of control did that possession look to start? And then Cartwright somehow identified Bullock all the way in the front court. And you're talking about a 5-11 Cartwright playing against two Rhode Island Rams defenders that are way taller than him. But you teach kids, you teach guards the retreat dribble. When you see pressure, retreat dribble, that's what Cartwright did. Created space, found bullet. Now URI trailing by three. Almost in a situation they may have to go for the three at the time. You go quick first. If you get penetration and you see Mr. Archer for a three, then you take it. That's nearly five seconds, and a smart play to bounce this off the leg of Jalen Lindsay, saving URI from the turnover. I still think you go quick. You try to first initially get something going to the basket. You might get fouled again and get a three-point play. But if you get something going to the basket, usually defenders turn their back, and then you can find a three-point shooter. Jared Terrell again with Lindsay in his face. 12.2 on the clock. Rams looking to come back and tie this game. Down to 10. Terrell driving. Pulled over his man. Foul on the floor, and it's a blocking foul against Lindsey. And I think that's a good play, being impressive. You're in the bonus. You're going to the free throw line now. You knock down these two. It's a one-point game. You try to go for the steal and foul. It was good. A good. That was a good decision. Didn't sell for the three-point shot. Early is out of timeouts for both teams out of timeouts for that, Matt. Nope, Providence has one, excuse me. Providence with one remaining. Dan Hurley, though, is out of timeouts as he huddles up his team. Well, right now, Jalen Lindsay just fouled out. Yes. He gets the time. He gets 30 seconds right now to use to kind of take his time. Now you have a crucial player fouling out, a guy who made a big-time shot for you, a guy who can make free throws for you. He's not on the court right now. Lindsay. Picked up a couple of key rebounds in this game. He's been a terrific cog on the defensive end. And now Terrell can bring URI as close as one. Remember, it's a one and one as well. That's a key make. Yeah, right. What you're thinking right now, what you have your team do, you rolled out a ramp. Terrell makes this free throw. Terrell makes this free throw as Coach Cooley calls the timeout. He wants to kind of throw Terrell off on his free throw shooting and hopefully use his timeout to make him miss, make him think about it. Either way, Alex, Alex, either way. Terrell makes this free throw, you're down one. You press hard and you go for the steal. As you go for the steal, if you don't get it, you foul. If you miss this free throw, you foul right away. You extend this game as much as possible and you make Providence make free throws. Two-point game, 8.3 to go in another classic between these two. 129 meetings, that's counting two exhibitions back in the 1920s. 96 years worth of history between these two, and much like last year, it could come down to the final possession. You can't ask for anything for today on a Saturday afternoon for a game like this, an in-state rivalry coming down to the last possession. The fans, the players, the coaches, the intensity, the energy, everything that you can ask for for the best possible game environment out there in college basketball. Sellout crowd at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. And they have been treated to another gym. Terrell back to the line. What this free throw would do is keep it a one possession game no matter what happens with Providence on the other end. And that's when you're in the timeout, Terrell was telling his team after Terrell makes it, he's telling them who you want to foul initially. Hopefully that's the person you want to foul. The lowest free throw percentage guy. One point game. 8.3 on the clock, and of course the Rams will go for the steal right out of the inbounds pass. Bullock to inbound for Providence. Cartwright slips into an open space. Well played by Cartwright to find the opening. And he gets fouled. And Cartwright shoots 68% three throw percentage this season so far. Today, he's only shot two free throws. He's one for two. 
where this is a situation where you're under duress, seven seconds left, and your team's only up one. You need to make both free throws. Already sitting on a career high 17 points today. Ed Cooley out of timeouts, as is Dan Hurley on the URI sideline. Now, Hartwright made that free throw. You have to keep, made a miss, keep. Roll out of rounds for shooting the three. Locate your man immediately. Three point game. Seven seconds to go. Crowd on its feet at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. No timeouts remaining. And Kelly gets it in. Five seconds. Here comes Matthews, and he comes up short. And it went out of play. 1.3 on the clock. That is not the shot I'd imagine Dan Hurley wanted. Oh, it's tough. You didn't have any more timeouts left. You had enough time to get a good shot. And because you didn't have enough timeouts, it's loud in the arena. This is where practice comes, where you run your, your sets at the end of practices for when it happens in the game. A tough dribble in, pull up three. You feel for what Matthews was trying to do, but there were a couple of seconds remaining on the clock. Perhaps enough time to set your feet, get a better look. Absolutely. Get, get better position, good base. Oh, Edwards at the line. He hasn't shot a free throw all year long. Well, I mean, if you're going to shoot a free throw in the critical of the game, you have to at least exaggerate your follow. <laughs> I, I call that, you have to shoot the mate, not shoot the rebound. Well, no matter what, if he misses, the timer will start right away, and you or I would just have to get a heave at that point. Oh, the the comes. A move point as Providence survives. Rhode Island led by six at the half. But for the seventh straight time, the Friars get the better of the Rams in this cross-state rivalry. What a game. Very good game. Coming down to the last possession, a hard-fought game, everything we expected. Very good win for Coach Cooley's team, beating a 21-ranked Rhode Island Rams. That'll help them on their resume as college basketball moves on. Disappointing stretch for URI, losing to Valpo on Wednesday, and a tough pill to swallow against their bitter rivals here today. Our final score, Providence College 63, URI 60. Tussle at the Dunkin' Donut Center goes the way of the Friars for the seventh straight time. And a thriller in front of a sellout crowd. So for Nikki Simpkins and our entire crew here at Providence, I'm Alex Faust. We bid you a good night from Providence, Rhode Island.